Hello mga kabulero, good morning, good afternoon or good evening at welcome sa bago na namang edisyon ng ating Dynamics of Rigid Body Subject. So ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon ay ang last major topic ng Dynamics of Rigid Bodies at ito ang kinematics. So in the previous lessons, our discussion circles around the principles of kinematics and if we will analyze the problems that we solve are quantities which doesn't have any reference to the force which caused the motion. So for kinetics, we are not only considering the motion, but most especially the force that acts to the body which caused the motion. So yung mga subtopics na na-discuss natin sa kinem kinematics such as horizontal motion, vertical motion, and angular motion ay dapat Wag natin kakalimutan kasi meron itong link or meron link ang kinematics sa kinetics. Ang kaibahan lang talaga is kinetics ay meron tayong consideration sa forces. So let's proceed to our next slide. So just to review our prior knowledge kung saan nag-branch out or kung saan branch ng engineering mechanics na kaline up ang kinetics. Let's use this chart to check. So engineering mechanics is divided into two, the mechanics of solids and mechanics of fluids. And of course, since we are dealing with rigid bodies, dito siya nag-branch out sa mechanics of solids. And right here, mechanics of rigid bodies has two sub-branches, and these are statics and dynamics. And wherein dynamics are divided into two, which we all know as kinematics and kinetics. Ngayon, pag-usapan lang natin yung kaibahan ni kinematics at kinetics. Medyo, kung iisipin natin, medyo late na yung introduction na to. Pero that's totally fine kasi parang review na lang natin to since na-discuss na natin yung kinematics. Okay? So to provide a quick differentiation between the two sub-branches of dynamics, here are their definitions and examples. At madalas, mas naiintindihan natin ang isang bagay kapag may mga examples. Kaya kung titingnan natin yung list sa screen, ay marirealize natin ang implications ng bawat isa. Halimbawa, nung nag-solve tayo ng motion ng objects moving horizontally or vertically, wala tayong ginawang analysis kung bakit mabagal or mabilis yung movement. Right? So nag-solve lang tayo ng distance covered, the time of flight, at iba pang components or variables na meron sa kinematic system. But this time for kinetics, dito natin pag-uusapan ang implications ng forces sa motion. Kung saan meron tayong mga makikita mga um, proportionality sa equations. Like the acceleration of the object is directly proportional sa force. So, ibig sabihin, mas malakas na force ang i-apply sa object, mas malaki ang rate of change ng velocity or yung acceleration. Diba? So, balikan natin ang pinag-aralan natin sa Physics 1, which is the loss of motion by Isaac Newton or what we call the classical physics. And this time, meron tayong idadagdag na approach sa pag-a-analyze ng forces at ito ang D. Alembert's principle. So, let's proceed to the next slide. And Bago tayo dumako dun sa mga uh, sa loss of motion ni Isaac Newton at yung D. Alembert's principle, pag-usapan muna natin, ano nga ba ang force? So, just a quick brief history. Si Isaac Newton, kung maaalala natin, ang nag-revolutionize ng physics noong 17th century. And yung loss of motion ang pinaka nakapagpasikat sa kanya. Kasi nung time niya, uh, siya lang ang nag-iisang nakapagbigay ng mathematical model ng mga objects and with the introduction of the force, which is gravity. And ang physics na nagawa ni Newton, yun nga tinatawag nating classical mechanics. And classical mechanics ang nagde-describe sa relationship ng motion sa ating paligid at sa mga forces na nag ng motion. So as long as yung system under study ay hindi comparable sa size ng atom or hindi nagta-travel close to the speed of light, as we all know, the 3 times 10 meters per second, di ba? 
ang classical mechanics ang makakapagbigay ng perfect na description ng nature. So, force, ang SI unit nito ay Newton from, from Sir Isaac Newton. At ang definition nito ay um, ng isang, ng, ng one Newton, so the definition is when one Newton of force acts on an object that has a mass of one kilogram, it produces an acceleration of one meters per second squared in the object. So based on definition, makikita natin na ang Newton ay pwede express in terms of the fundamental units of mass, length, and time, which is one Newton, ang, ito is SI unit niya. So one Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. So hindi na natin i-discuss yung iba pang uh, mga units like the English system or yung CGS, uh, pag-usapan na lang natin is yung SI unit ng Newton. Okay? So let's move on to the discussion of the translational dynamics as proposed by Sir Isaac Newton, which is pag-usapan lang natin dito yung three laws of motion, but most specifically, pag magsusolve tayo ng, ng problems, ay madalas ang ginagamit na lang natin na definition or na uh, na principle is yung second law of motion. So, wag nating i-skip yung first first law of motion. So, Newton's first law of motion states that if a body is at rest, it will remain at rest. And if it is in motion, it will remain in motion with constant speed in a straight line unless there is a, a net force acting upon it. So, yun yung tinatawag nating law of inertia. At ang ibig sabihin nun, kapag daw yung net force, so ibig sabihin, pag pinagsama-sama daw yung mga forces acting on an object is zero. Yung motion ng isang object, either it's resting or moving, ay mapapreserve. Yun lang ang ibig sabihin ng F net is equal to zero. Ngayon, sa second law of motion, Sinasabi dito that if a net force, F, acting on a body of mass, M, is not zero. So ito naman, kapag pag pinagsama-sama yung mga forces, ay hindi daw mag-zero mag out. Kasi alam naman natin yung forces ay vector quantities. Meron tong um, magnitude at saka direction. So pag pinagsama-sama yun, kinuha yung vector sum, ay hindi zero, the body accelerates in the direction of the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the body. So the second law is all about non-zero net force. At kapag ganito yung amount na nag-act sa stationary or moving object, magkakaroon ngayon ng tinatawag na acceleration. So acceleration, again, is the rate of change ng velocity ng object. And it can be positive or negative acceleration. As we know, acceleration is a vector quantity. If it's positive, the object will accelerate. And if it's negative, the object will decelerate. At magdedepende ang acceleration sa direction ng mga forces acting sa object. Kaya kung tatandaan natin, ito yung tinatawag na law of acceleration. And yung formula is not equated to the force but kasi nga law of acceleration. So acceleration yung nasa left side ng equation. So acceleration is equal to force divided by the mass. Okay? So kung titingnan natin um, yung force formula, hindi ko pala nalagay yung force sa left side, force would be equal to the mass times acceleration. Okay? The third law of motion ni Isaac Newton is the law of action and reaction. And what it says, in every action, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. Ito yung principle na kapag merong force na in sa isang object, yung object ay merong equal na force or katumbas na force na parang ia-apply din niya doon sa kabilang object. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng mga examples natin, recoil ng baril kapag pinutok or nagbabounce na bola pag drinibol at maraming marami pang ibang examples. Okay? So those are just um, an introduction for 
or actually not an introduction, a refresher for the laws, Newton's law of motion. As we know, part na yan ng physics 1 natin. Now, ito yung susunod or bago siguro sa pandinig natin. Pero halos parehas lang ang approach ng principle na to. Ito ang tinatawag natin na D. Alembert's principle uh, proposed by Jean Leyrond D. Alembert. So yung translational dynamics, um, parehas pa rin yung, yung approach. It investigates translational motion ng object and deals with the effects that forces have in motion. So ano sinasabi dito sa D. Alembert's principle? Ang sabi dito, the resultant of the external forces acting to a body, um, it's either be a rigid or non-rigid, and reversed effective force is equal to zero. So kung iisipin natin mabuti, ang equation na REF or reverse effective force is the resultant of the external forces. Di ba pag nagsasolve tayo ng, ng, um, ng Newton's second law or ng forces using Newton's second law, um, parang magkahaling tulad lang siya sa summation or the vector sum of the forces along the horizontal or vertical plane. Na ang unang consideration natin ay is equal to zero. So, sa susunod na video, magsasolve tayo ng kinetic problems gamit ang Newton's second law at the same time gamit ang D. Alembert's principle at malalaman natin ang comparison and contrast ng dalawang approach. Pretty exciting. So, kung in terms of the equation, ayan, yung P is uh, the applied force minus F, which is friction. And most commonly, kapag ka friction, lagi yan sa lungat, sa sa movement or sa direction ng force, di ba? Kaya nga friction. Kasi kung walang friction, uh, ang bagay hindi hihinto. Okay? Pagka frictionless, gaya ng, um, ng space, ng, ng, ng vacuum, tuloy-tuloy lang ang movement kapag ka nagsimula na siyang mag-move. So, due to friction, humihinto ang mga bagay. So, P minus F minus the REF or the reversed effective force, ang sagot or ang, equal, uh, ang equation na yan is zero. Or, Kapag ka naman kukunin natin yung, um, yung mass, di ba? kasi nga daw REF is just equal to the mass times acceleration, which is the summation of forces. Di ba? So acceleration multiplied by W is weight divided by uh, gravity. So pag kinuha mo yung gravity divided by weight, ay makukuha mo lang naman is mass. Di ba? So mass times acceleration. So let's proceed to our next slide. So idadagdag lang natin sa ating discussion ang work kasi napakadali na lang intindihin ang concept ng work eh. So work is um, a scalar quantity. Ibig sabihin nito, um, it's only a number rather than a vector na merong direction. And mas madali natin siyang ma-handle kasi no direction is associated with it. So work is a quantity that exists whenever a force is acting upon an object which causes a change in its position. So, yun na yung magbibigay sa atin ng napaka-direct definition ng work. And wala rin consideration ang work sa time. Kaya pwede nating ma-take advantage in, um, in problems involving our only velocities and positions. So, take note, uh, ang applied force ay always parallel to the displacement. Okay? So, doon na lang siguro yung magiging uh, basihan natin. An saan ba yung direction? Okay? And ang definition ng work or in terms of its unit, the SI unit for work is Newton meter or joule. At ang definition ng one joule ay work done on an object when a force of one newton na nag-act sa object ay nag ng displacement na 1 meter. Okay, so much for an introduction. At ito nga pala yung mga problems na isosolve natin sa susunod na video for kinetics. At pwede nyo i-pause at subukang isolve. Okay, kapag meron na kayong solutions, pwede nyo nang puntahan yung um, solutions to kinetic problems video na nakalay, nag, nakalagay din yung links sa description box. So this is problem number one asking for, um, or the problem is a horizontal force of 
150 newton is applied on a 20 kilogram box, which causes uh, the movement to the right. So the question were, first, what is the acceleration if there is no friction? Second is, what is the acceleration if the coefficient of friction or coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.25? C, using the acceleration on part A and B, what is the final speed of the box after eight seconds? And letter D, how much work is done for the system with and without friction involved? So marami akong um, consideration dito ng parang series of questions para magkaroon tayo ng, par ng direct link from kinematics to kinetics at hindi natin makakalimutan yung mga na-discuss natin in the previous ses sessions. So here's problem number two. Please feel free to pause the video and then try to solve. For problem number two, a woman on an elevator weighs 110 newtons. So letter A, compute the force exerted by the woman on the floor of the elevator if it's accelerating upward at three meters per second squared. And letter B, if the elevator is accelerating downward at three meters per second squared, find the force exerted by the woman on the elevator or on the floor of the elevator. Okay, and number three, this would be the last problem. So a 10 kilogram box rest on a 30 degree incline begins to slide down. So part one, what is the acceleration if there is no friction present? Part two, what is the acceleration if the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.2? Part three, using the acceleration in part two, compute for the final speed of the box when it reaches the bottom of the incline, that is 200 meters. And last, how much work is done for the system with and without friction involved? So, napakaganda na mayroon tayong mga computations na ganito kasi mas maiintindihan natin ano nga ba yung mga implications na natutunan natin sa Physics 1 from, from our uh, instructors with, uh, with their discussion for the Newton's Law of Motion. Okay? And by the way, you have to compute or we will be computing um, using the Newton's Second Law of Motion and also together with the DLM's principle sabay na or simultaneous yung pagko-compute natin doon at para magkaroon tayo ng distinction between uh, what's the difference of the computation kay uh, Newton's second law and then the DLM's principle so mahaba-habang computation at napaka-exciting and hanggang dito na lang muna ang ating introduction video and feel free to watch the videos for the solution of the problems shown in uh, the description box and thank you so much again, everyone. See you again on my next video, video mga kabolero.